Millsy, you graduated college, right? Uh, I did, yeah. Where'd you go to college? Geneva, if you don't mind me asking. Uh, Geneva College and outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Wasn't even a university. I mean, it was accredited, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> you know what? I didn't graduate college, but I went to the University of Shutting Your Mouth. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. That's right. Hey, we're going back to college, everybody. Welcome back to Hometown Commander, the podcast where we talk about your favorite format that we all know and love. And hate. And hate. That's right. Today, we are going to be talking about two commanders for this wonderful head-to-head episode. These two commanders are from the very, very fun, I would guess. I would not know because I did not play, unfortunately. Uh, fun set of Strixhaven, which was a mystical college i'm not gonna, hold on, i'm hold not on. gonna say it hold on quick side what's the subline for strixhaven it actually has a it has a colon in the name oh, is it like school of mages it is yeah okay. Okay. i just wanted to make sure you knew it okay I, I don't know i didn't play shut up don't don't yell at me dad um so yeah uh strixhaven school of mages uh we chose two uh commanders from two different schools that we thought we were we were most fascinated with and we are going to pin them head to head. We are also going to try our best to convince you to one day enroll to one of those colleges because um, there is definitely a better one. <clears throat> Not going to say which one, but maybe later. But first, I feel very energized right now, <laughs> and I'm not. That's what's really sad. I went could into it, that. Could it be? And hear me out. Because of rogue energy. It is not surprisingly, but if it was, then I'd probably be even a higher uh, amount of energy that would be coursing through my veins. Um, guys, rogue energy really, really good for you. Got really great flavors. Um, if you haven't tried their great popsicle, uh, you need to do it. Yeah, it's, it's uh, it, good. it is. It is very quickly continuing to be my favorite flavor. Yeah, see, it's so good. Uh, now, I'm not saying that's the only good one. They do have a lot of other ones. I actually had one of the cookies and cream shakes the other night because I've had a sweet tooth. And it has zero sugar in it. So guess what? Was it was it Sunday night? Yeah. I did too, man. Oh, let's go, baby. That's crazy. <laughs> we didn't plan that, guys. No, I just want you to know not. that. We, we, we did not plan that at all. 100% um, send them an email and everything. No. Um, but yeah, you can go over to RogueEnergy.com, get your entire order 10% off by using the wonderful code HOMETOWN. That is HOMETOWN, all one word, all caps, HOMETOWN, H O M E T O. WN. Then you can come over to the Discord, tell us how you feel about it. Uh, if you hate it, come tell us about it. You love it, definitely come tell us about it, because then we're going to order some more, and we might even give you some if we see you. Guess um, where we're at, Mikey? We on the YouTubes. We on the YouTube. We're back on that YouTube life. By the uh, time you hear this, we will be back on some semblance of a regular upload schedule on YouTube, including this episode. This episode will be on YouTube. You may be listening to this on YouTube right now. Some of you may be listening to this on your favorite podcast platform. If you are listening on YouTube, Go check out our other videos. We had openings and cool stuff. If you're listening to this on our podcast platforms, go check out our YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Uh, thank you, Millsy, for uh, putting putting a lot of effort into that. I know that my schedule has been wonkus, uh, so I cannot uh, do as much as I knew. Do you know I find to, helps uh, uh, rendering videos when you're when you're just putting decks together while the videos are rendering and you just lose sleeve. track of time? Sleeve, <laughs> sleeve. Oh, it's finally done. <laughs> I there was actually a point the night I was doing it where I was playing Arena, it was rendering, and I was sleeving a deck at the same time. Oh my gosh, your life is revolving around the wonderfulness that is magic. Um, Please don't talk about my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I just did, uh, even though I already talked about college. Uh, speaking of colleges, um, listen, I like college. I do. I enjoy a good game of college football. I enjoy March Madness as much as the next guy, but I personally never went to college, um, and I'm doing great in life. Hello, no, um, <laughs> but I will say, like, college has never been a thing that I wanted to just kind of like pursue consistently. It's always been a thought in the back of my head. But this that we're about to talk about today, this makes me want to go to one of these schools because let me tell you, nothing beats casting spells at another student and telling him to suck it via fireball. I, I can't disagree. It seems like it would be a pretty cool time. Except for the school that you chose would definitely not be casting hey, fireballs. Hey, hey, let's not give it away now. <laughs> at, well, I mean, uh, there's like only two. So there's think, five colleges for us to choose from. There right? are five colleges. Please enlighten us on the Strixhaven. Teach me, oh wise one, about the Strixhaven. Colleges. We have Warhold, <laughs> Red White. Yeah. 
aka Boros, for us old for us old people. Uh, who who? What's the what's the dragon that leads that? Velamachus, Lorehold. Oh, love that name. Pretty red dragon. Andy Mil- uh, Andy Velamachus guy. Andy Velamachus. We have Prismari, our is it college? Mm, yes. Uh, Off brand is it? Yeah. Is what we're Spe- gonna call that? <laughs> Spearheaded by Galateth Prismari. If you haven't noticed the theme here yet. <laughs> Off brand is Off brand is it? <laughs> We have uh, Quandrix, our off-brand Simic College. Oh, no, 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 no. That's different. Uh, that is... Uh, it actually is fairly different, but that's headed up by uh, Tanzanir Quandrix, our uh, head dragon. Math is fun. That's what I'm calling but, that one. But math is fun. That's what I'm calling that one. Math is fun. We have uh, Silverquill, our Orzov College, led by Shadrix Silverquill. A bunch of preachy bastards. They just like to teach you and talk they, to you. They would be the, the drama school if Prismari wasn't the drama, the drama school. school. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then we have Witherbloom, our Golgari College, led by Belladros Witherbloom. Which are the goth kids. <laughs> they are 100% the goth kids. <laughs> so, um, Millsy, would you like to tell uh, the, the wonderful listeners at home or at the gym <laughs> what school you chose? I think most listeners would have guessed that I would have chosen Quandrix, right? It seems like it would have been me. Yeah. Um, the true problem is most of the commanders in this color combination care about making tokens, mm-hmm. and I had been playing other time other token ideas at this time when it came out. Um, but was the a- strategy that I. The strategy that I hadn't, I'd never really played much of in Commander, and I was looking for an outlet for it, was Aristocrats. Everybody loves Aristocrats. It's definitely a deck strategy. <laughs> no, not everybody, but okay. It's a strategy we don't find much outside of Orsov, right? It tends to very much be a black-white... Oh, yeah. Uh, Taysa does a great job with yeah. it, for sure. Well, in this set, Strixhaven School of Mages, we got the best Aristocrats combination mm-hmm. that you can find. We combo black. Mm, well, yes. The color of death and benefiting from death. Well, there's only two colleges now. With the single best color in magic, green. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> to make Witherbloom. Yes, my friends, we picked Witherbloom. It's very tough for me. You know, I've never been a big Golgari guy, I think, because I haven't, I've yet to find a commander that I truly uh, enjoy actually playing. Like, there's definitely Golgari commanders, and I look at them, and I'm like, yeah, that looks cool. And then it's like, yeah, I don't really like playing this. Um, I've actually bounced back and forth between Dina and Belladros with a bloom so many times as the commander for the strategy. And I think it's because each of them provides you so much. I think Dina provides you with, with a much more life-focused aristocrat strategy. You're going to be utilizing more of the pinging, you know, ping one, gain one type effects uh, with, with your aristocrats to um, push strategy forward. Whereas I think Belladros re- kind of revolves more around the making a lot of tokens and sacrificing them for other effects style. You know, he plays, a, she plays a little bit more, and I apologize, she plays a little bit more into the uh, treasure strategies that you could have or anything else. And because of your ability to, you know, pay 10 life to untap all your lands, you, you're putting a lot more resources into setting up. You know, you can play a four mana enchantment that makes you a token every turn or a five mana creature that plays you into a token every turn because you have the mana to do that. Whereas I think a Dina list focuses more on sitting lower to the ground and pinging out for effects. So what I love the most about Witherbloom in this set, which it isn't necessarily, uh, I don't think it's necessarily exclusive to Witherbloom. I think every college in this set has multiple ways you can run the decks that they have. But what I really like here is we're using the same mechanic, which is pests, small creatures that when they die or you just when they die, so whether you sacrifice them, whether they die in combat, whatever it might be, uh, your opponents lose a life and you gain a life. Now, Belladros tends to use that effect as a byproduct, whereas Dina is focusing on that. Right. Um, I've built more lists than I can count for both of them, and I continue to just lean back towards Belladros. I still love the big green aspect to it, where you're focusing on untapping your lands. Paying 10 mana to untap all your lands is not an effect that you get. You mean 10 life? Uh, t- t- sorry, yeah, pay 10 life to untap all your lands. You can only do it once per turn. You can do it once on every turn if you have enough life to do it. Um, but to me, Belgers is, if you like life gain, but you also like aristocrats, I think it. this is the color combination for that. You get the best of both worlds and you have your choice. Do you want to lean into the life gain or do you want to leave into the aristocrats? Uh, Belgers also makes a pest on everyone's turn. 
So it's kind of like a uh, it's kind of like a better bitter blossom slapped on a commander as opposed to just an enchantment. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Witherbloom pairs everything we love about uh, black: the value from death, the uh, sacrifice and the using resources for a gain with just the metric ton of ramp and bonus we get from green. And I think it's hard pressed to find a commander when it's built very well that can out punch a aristocrats deck, especially in black green. I agree. Uh, I, the I, incidental I, damage that's the instrumental that, life gain and yeah. damage is enough to push you ahead of most decks. Yeah, that's exactly what I was about to say. I love the the pinging effect. It doesn't seem like it does much, but it really can affect the way a, a game can can swing. To really me, quickly. to me, the reason why I, I picked uh, Witherbloom is just because I think we got so many cool pieces, especially in the spell slots, in in this set that I just don't think we've seen much of. Um, so I'm just going to highlight a couple cards because I think they're really cool. The first is Culling Ritual. It's a sorcery we got in Strixhaven for two black green. It says destroy each non-land permanent with mana value two or less. And you can add a black or green for each of them. You're going to get rid of tokens. You're going to get rid of a lot of small artifacts. You're going to get rid of a lot of things. And it nets you a ton of mana. This is something that, of course, we can use uh, to benefit us, right? Because, hey, what, what wouldn't you want to do with a ton of extra mana? <laughs> um, and let's be honest, if somebody else is playing a token deck, I don't think you mind losing your tokens in the process to net you mana. Right. Now, we're playing Fraction Altars. We're playing Ash Altars. We're, we're playing ways to get mana back from ours. But, hey, who doesn't love n- netting mana from your opponent's creatures? Yeah, exactly. That's really good. The other thing I love about uh, this, the other thing I love about this uh, Witherbloom strategy is we got multiple cards that allow you to sack a creature and get a benefit. So the first one is uh, is Rushed Rebirth. Uh, it is an instant. It says choose target creature. When that creature dies this turn, search your library for a creature card with less CMC. Put it on the battlefield tap and shuffle. So this is. I, I use this as a protection spell. If you're going to kill my commander, I'm going to get something less than it for free. Mm. This will go so so in in a Belladrosa list where I think this is an all star. You can go get Chatterfang. You can go get a, a Tender Shoot Dryad. You can get so many creatures that make mana, and you can benefit from it. Then you have another card like Ten the Pest. This is an additional cost to cast the spell. Sack a creature, and you make X one one Pest where X is that creature's power. <sighs> Such a good card. So we're. We're going to be leveraging some creatures. Now, the cool part about this is if you're making tokens that are bigger than one ones, you could sack one of those tokens, or you know, you could. Um, we have certain creatures in the deck that you know, like an, well, you know, like let's say we play an Avengers Zen and we get the plant tokens. You know, if we buff the plant tokens up big enough, we could sack an Avenger of Zendikar to this ten the pests and get a bunch of, or sack one of our plant tokens to it to get a bunch of one ones. Um, this strategy very much revolves around just really slam dunk ways to make tokens mm-hmm. and then use them. Um, this strategy got one of my favorite removal spells of all of the last year, which is Pest Infestation. This came out in the Commander deck, which was headed up by uh, I forgot her name, uh, Willow Dusk. It says destroy up to X target artifacts or enchantments, and then you make twice X one one Pest tokens. Now, the cool part of the spell is it says up to X. Yeah. Meaning if an opponent only has one mana, one artifact, you can still dump 12 mana into this, make five pests, and only kill that one artifact. You know, you could sack every token you have to Ashnaut's Altar, make a ton of mana, dump it into this, and make more of them. Yeah. Uh, This strategy has so many cheap and easy ways to just dump creature tokens on the battlefield. Now, the way that I've built the... Belladrosa list, which unfortunately I don't have in front of me, and it'll be the list that I carry going forward, um, is using these this incidental life gain to our advantage. You know, we're making all these pests and we're making all these creatures. We're going to use things like Bastion of Remembrance. We're going to use things like these pests to just incrementally drain our opponents out. But it's not going to be our main goal. Our main goal is going to be to swarm the board. Hopefully we can actually do something else, whether it's uh, winning by combat or that. But what I've always liked about Belladrosa as an aristocrat's commander, is having your figure kind of always on the nuke button, threatening your opponents that if you if you if you wipe the board right now, I have twenty five pest triggers that are going to the stack. I have twenty pest triggers that are going yeah. to the stack, and you kind of uh, 
you kind of create this, um, I, I want to use the word piss, the phrase pissing match, because it kind of is. You're saying, hey, try it, because if you do, I'm just going to blow up everything. Right. And it's just going to be worse. Yeah. Um, we get all of the black tutoring. We get all of the black removal. Black green is some of the best removal um, in the game, uh, being Assassin's Trophy or Putrefy, or we get a new one here, Mortality Spear. It says when you gain life, it just costs red black, or sorry, green black to destroy a creature. Um, we get some of the best. Uh, we get some of the best artifacts to create mana in the game that care about creatures. Frexian Altar, Ash Knight's Altar. Um, we you know we get we get Skull Clamp here to full effect, um, and then we get uh, to still play the life gain combos that are there, but we're not focusing on them. They're just there incrementally. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think Adina List probably cares more about f f going into them completely. Whereas I think I think f the way I've built Belladros is to just use it incrementally as a as a as a side win con. Um, I have messed a lot around with the Prismari College, and I have to say I really like a lot of what Galaseth does and a lot of what the strategy does. But to me, I think at the end of the day, Witherbloom is everything I love about green mixed with everything that I can love about black in one college. And so, if you're a green player like me who loves green. And your issue with black has always been that the lack of ramp, the lack of kind of consistency. I think not only Golgari in general, but I think these these Witherbloom commanders can give you what you want as far as that goes. Nice. Yeah. Um, I like this strategy a lot. I like the I like the Strixhaven combination of green and black more than the old Golgari uh, strategy of green and black. Um, I like I like the aristocratic style i like the play around with um everyone's life title not just your own kind of thing um and I, I really think if you can get in something that can net you mana or even just a sack if you can get an instant sack outlet where you have to where you just set where it says sack creature then do x y and z um that's scary one thing i love about uh Belladress now versus when strixhaven came out is we got access to probably one of the single best green black commanders we've seen in the last year and that's chatterfang chatterfang's an all-star and, and in either of these lists yes. for for pushing your strategy forward but we've also gotten access to a lot of treasure payoffs in black and green so not only does Belladress care about playing around with um playing around with creatures, but you can also play around with the treasures. The treasures yeah. that you may do other things. Um, my, both my Dina and my Belladrosa lists always play finishers like Exsanguinate and Torment of Hellfire to end the game. You're also going to play your Finale of Devastations and your Triumph of the Words. We, we still want to be able to end the game if we need to end the game, but we're trying to do it in a combo fashion as opposed to a, a combat. A combat fashion. The other thing that I love about the strategy is we get things like Cryptolith Rite and Song of Fraley's, or we can tap our tokens for more mana. Yeah. We have no lack of mana in this strategy, and we get access to way too much to enable it. Yep. And especially if you're using uh, Belladros himself, like just paying ten life in a in a life manipulating game, you're you're gonna get that. You're gonna be okay with paying the ten life. I mean, we saw when like in a game not too long ago. Uh, I was playing a card that stole your Belladros out of your deck. Uh, you were playing Dina at the time. I was playing a card. I was playing a morph deck. I stole the Belladros, flipped him, did the pay the ten life on Tavern Lands, and then I won the game uh, because of it, which was hilarious. But it's still, like I said, like when you're when you're playing with a life manipulation, you're fine with paying that ten life. So the 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 hard part for me in this college has always been Dina versus Beldros. Because like I said before, they both have very viable strategies. They do. The thing I like the most the thing why I think I've always preferred Beldros is he costs she costs more, right? Mm -hmm. She's seven mana compared to Dina's two, right? Um the thing I liked about Beldros is we're focusing on ramping faster. We we have to get up to seven to get Beldros, right? Otherwise really in all reality our strategy our strategy is not working. I think the benefit is that you play those first five turns quicker and more efficiently mm -hmm. when you're trying to work towards something than slamming Dean on turn two and trying to find something after that. Um, the other thing here is I think I've always just found Belladros works better when you're f going to find your token producers, whereas Dina tends to work better when you're going and finding your payoffs. I think they both they both care about different things to me when, mm -hmm. I, when, I, when I look at the lists. So for me, as a, as a green guy, I much prefer the ramp style of, 
Belladros going quickly and then having more kind of more room to play around with it. Because I, uh, I've noticed that when I'm playing Dina, there becomes a point where you just don't seem to have enough mana because mm -hmm. your focus isn't as much on uh, isn't as much on ramping as hard. It's it's more on getting the combos out and getting them enabled. Whereas I feel like Belladros has that time to ramp up and 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 start providing you with more payoffs. Now the the big thing that I think the most recent version of my Belladros list that I'm going to start testing and going forward with going forward is I've figured out that I'm have been missing a ton of producers that should have been in either deck to begin with and I think that will give it so much more staying power going forward but I think the Wither Boom College is definitely something that I wouldn't have picked normally because I'm not a fan of the self mill traditional Golgari style but I think this deck plays so much in between you know both and I really enjoy that I actually would kind of argue that this style it plays more half and half green black than it does uh, the traditional graveyard Golgari, which plays a lot more black than green. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, so what I'm saying, Mikey, is play with the or you're wrong. That's that's what I'm saying. Um. Well, then I guess I'll have to be wrong. Prove you wrong. Uh. Well. Just gonna jump right into it. why go Prismari. I'll tell you. You like casting spells. You, you go Prismari. Not particularly, no. no, no, you, no, no you, you, you go Prismari. Uh, you, you like hitting somebody in the face with a lot of damage and not having to worry about your creature dying? You go Prismari. You like dancing and singing? You go Prismari. <laughs> um, my theater background definitely would pick Have Prismari Have you ever thought to yourself, <laughs> can I dance and sing while I'm playing Magic? Go Prismari. <laughs> go Prismari, exactly. I uh, chose the, the Prismari College, uh, the red and blue. Um, it is definitely off brand, is it, for sure. Uh, it plays a lot with wanting to cast a lot of spells. Now, there are probably two different ways that you can go with it. Unlike Dina and Witherbloom here, uh, for me to compare to Galazeth uh, Prismari himself, I went the Varen Voice of Duality as my commander, who is a one colorless, one blue, one red, 2-2 two -two creature with Magecraft. And whenever I cast or copy an instant or sorcery, Varen Voice of Duality gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So kind of like a prowess just for instant and sorceries, if you know what prowess is. If you, and then her second part is, if you, ca or excuse me, if you casting or copying an instant or sorcery spell causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So essentially, if I cast uh, an instant or sorcery and it causes something to go off. Or copy. Or copy, yes. And it causes something to go off uh, some kind of trigger, it happens twice. Uh, so, more or less, let's just make it easy. For Voice of Duality, Miss Varen herself, she will basically get plus two, plus two until in a turn, rather than plus one, plus one. Um, which is great. Um, that, that just makes her a 4-4 four, four, right off the rip if I cast something, something, some, something, something, something so little, uh, like a one minute, uh, one mana ponder or something like that. Needless to say, we are... And I cannot hesitate to say this as enough as I can. We are casting a booty ton of instants and sorceries to make that happen as many times as possible. Uh, I am definitely running a heavy... Storm without playing Storm. Yeah. That's basically what yeah, Varen is. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, heavy Storm without Storm. Um, I am running Grape Because the Storm mechanic's broken. We can both admit that. Well, I am running Grape Shot, but that's beside the point. Well, no, but Grape Shot's not the problem with Storm as a mechanic. This is very true, <laughs> no. Definitely not. Um, but uh, I think I think it's just a lot of fun to sit here and just cast and then cast and then cast and then get great payoffs from it. Um, something like... Um, I could just go straight into it. Uh, something like any of the Nib Mizzets, whether it be Perrin or... Uh, Pay Perrin, or the fire mind i think they have great payoffs for this uh, strategy they get to do two damage rather than one uh, and you're going to be constantly doing that there's way too many combos with them to pop off uh infinitely or quote unquote infinitely um until you reach your last card in your deck but hopefully everybody will be dead before that time um and it just and it's just so many payoffs for it uh one of my favorite is storm killing artist who also comes out of uh, the prismari college um three colorless and a red for a uh, Dwarf Shaman 2-2. Two, two. Uh, Stormkill Artist uh, gets plus one, plus O for each artifact you control, but the bottom side is another Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery, here we go again, um, 
create a treasure token. So now you're creating two treasure tokens if you have Vayron out and Storm Cantlin out and you're pushing your mana value further, which is great because if you are actually running Mr. Galazeth Prismari himself, like I am, uh, your artifacts you control have tap, add one mana of any color, uh, but you spend this only to cast instant and sorceries. But guess what, Millsy? We're running 30... Four. Are we running? Are we on, are we running only instant sorceries? No, we're running thirty-four, and I'm running uh, seventeen creatures uh, that have really cool payoffs. I think what's really good about uh, Varen is she makes every single traditional is it spells pay off even better. Yeah. Uh, electric static field is better. Yep. Uh, gutter snipe is better. Yep. Uh, Runaway steamkin, if that's the route you're choosing to play, it gets I, better. I did not. Thank goodness. <laughs> um, all of your traditional spell payoffs that either deal damage or net you something when you play them. How about an Archma just... Archmage a Emertus? Emertus, yep. Yeah, drawing two cards instead of one. Yep. You have all of these traditional is it payoffs that just get better. You ever heard of a card called uh, Sprite Dragon? I have. Uh, one, uh, it has one of my favorite drinks in it, which is fun. Uh, two, it is flying in haste, which is great. Three. It gets big. It gets big because whenever you cast an on creature spell, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. Guess what? 34 instant sorceries. <laughs> I'm going to be putting two of them on there. Um, so I'm going to be pushing the advantage in combat, and maybe one or two creatures even more and even further. Uh, I am playing um, <clears throat> my favorite boy, my favorite red boy. Oh, yeah, he in there. Torbran, throw him in there. Might as well. Uh, that just makes things like Gutter Snipe and Electrostatics Field even better, and Firebrain Archer itself as well. Uh, it just makes those <laughs> just even crazier to just do even more damage. And the good part is, you know, you and you know, I, I talked a little bit about you know how the decks change since Strixhaven's release. I mean, you've gotten things like Smoldering Egg, which yep. just makes the whole pinging thing better. Yep. I mean, you you got a dragon that flips and proceeds to just deal damage every time. You got something like Manaform Hellkite, which right. just makes you tokens. Um, I like Varen because of how much you can abuse the payoffs, like. I think the, the, the trap with Varen is to make it a Voltron deck where you only attack with it. But the truth of the matter is, is you can you can drown people in payoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I really, really like... Uh, uh, crap, where was I looking at? Ah, there was... The classic, you know, I talked about classic payoffs for, you know, Witherbloom. Your classic payoff for Varen is Mizzix Master, right? It's yes. your big, that's, it's your big finisher. Say, yeah. It's the thing that's probably going to end the game off of... Not off your combat with Varen when it's big, but off the triggers that you're yes. going to set off with Mizzix Mastery. That's what I was going. That's what I was going to. Uh, yeah, Mizzix Mastery is probably one of the uh, biggest finishers for sure. Um, and even if I don't have that, something like an Underworld, uh, uh, underworld Breach can definitely help uh, either push the advantage or win the game. Uh, Thousand Year Storm was a great uh, consideration. Uh, I just wanted to go, I guess, a little bit faster than six mana. Uh, now, I'm saying if I probably sat down and did play it, I probably would play it. I think I think Thousand Year Storm is the top end that ends, you know, in in a higher budget like Varen list. I'm sure Thousand Year Storm's the goal. Mm -hmm. Like it's the card that just tends to push you over the hump because if you if you if you realize it. Uh, it's going to get copied twice yep. with Varen, which is just going to end up making it huge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not only make Varen huge, but it's just going to keep... I mean, I think probably your top end... You know, your top end for the Witherbloom deck is... You know, Aristocrat has its finest, right? Your top end for Varen is a, is a turns deck that just amasses turns. Yeah. Because you have just the ability to just... And I mean, and that's the thing I was wondering or trying to think about too, was I could go big turns and then win via turns but i was also trying to think outside of that realm and try to figure out how can i be okay with like doing a lot of combo pieces uh i went very or i didn't go very but i went more i guess a little thematic with it uh i wanted to kind of add a little flavor to it because that's just what i do i think i share your love for the more nickel and dime approach mm -hmm. the, the more cast those cheap spells and get your benefit there than the giant, you right. know, than, uh, the, than the giant uh, so, fancy spells of the world. Right, and then the, thing, the thing with the deck that I built here is, like, you're, you're drawing, you're drawing, you're drawing, you're going to be drawing a lot. You're going to be drawing a lot of cards. Uh, 
which is great because you can combo those in a lot of things. And, you know, like I said, I went more of a flavorful thing. And I feel like if you're a Prismari student, then you're trying to combo a lot of things together. Like if you're a dancer, you have way too many combos that you piece together to make the best piece that you can on a stage to wow your crowd. And I think this is the exact same thing here is like you're trying to find that perfect combo, that perfect piece to wow your opponents to make them uh, lose the game. So I think if we're also all honest, Varen is the best spells payoff that we've had on a red green commander. A red blue commander? Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. Red. Yes, red, no, blue. I agree. No. Uh just just red blue red blue, yes. We you have the ability to double everything on a fairly cheap body. And there are some very good red blue spells commanders, but I think Varen just pays them off quicker mm-hmm. than than the rest of them do. No, she definitely does. Um, and, and, the, and the support that you get off of it, you know, just the, the electrostatic field, the, uh, the, what is it, Talon, Sky Summoner? Talon, yeah. Yeah, to make, Talon. The, make the tokens. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's so many different payoffs you get off of just casting spells that it, it just, it just helps in the long run. Just, uh, the things that instant and sorceries can do alone are pretty easy and pretty, not necessarily minimal, but they're very simple and they can help for sure like i mean nobody just casts a lightning bolt for no reason but uh, i mean now you're saying that i can do more damage to everybody via gutter snipe i can create a 2-2 i can draw a card off emeritus i can um i'm trying to think of a oh i can now pump my uh my commander up you know to a 4-4 with just one mana that's that's pretty great i've seen a lot of people you know take varen and do instead of just farming the benefits you also have cards that let you make more and more copies of that. So, so you cast one brainstorm and get four or five of them. Right. And it, and so not only are you pumping Varen, but you're also getting the value of the extra copies you're not casting. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know about you, but I would love to brainstorm four times in a row without having to pay for it. I mean, yeah, it definitely seems uh pretty decent. <laughs> I mean, just and and, the, and you know, you you talk about storm kill artists, who's one of your treasure payoffs, and there's so many of them. Oh, for sure. Um, you know, I, I think the the cool part about the, both the commanders that we've chosen is just how many different routes you can take just them. Mm-hmm. For sure, I, I think it's it's interesting because like the way I went with it was you know very draw combo-y type, uh, playing the Niv Visit and then just getting that kind of those kind of combos out and whatnot, playing the one draw spell to win the game kind of thing. Um, you could you could play f- like a full on control style. You don't have to you know combo everything. You can just try to control the game, win via uh, not necessarily locking down your opponent, but uh, what was the word I'm looking for? Um, I guess shutting down your opponent and then finally winning. However, your <laughs> win con is. Um, I, I like I like the Witherbloom side of it too because like you still playing in green. Uh, you're playing in black as well, which has pretty decent bigger creatures. So I mean, you can play a big stompy green black list if you wanted to in that kind of in that kind of way. You have L- Witherbloom, who allows you to play multiple things in one turn because you can pay ten life to you untap your lands, which gives you a big big creature. Especially if you're playing like an X spell, like a Hydra or something. Now you have like this huge fourteen fourteen that came out of nowhere, um, which is incredible. So I mean, I love I love the different. Uh, approaches to both of these schools and I think uh, any of the schools that Strixhaven gave us was would be great um, I'm just saying that uh, you know, Prismari is probably one of the better ones because of the differences not just between Varen and Galazeth I look at like Zephy and the difference between Zephy, Galazeth and Varen. Varen's I, I feel like Varen is more of that cantropy kind of person that wants to play cheaper spells maybe uh, maybe to get Varen's ability kind of going and whatnot uh, mm, you ready for my hot take? I do. Or I do? I am. Uh, <laughs> I th- we're, we're married. <laughs> I think Varen is the best red-blue spells commander we have. I think that you, the payoffs you get are much outweighs Zephyr's payoffs. Oh, that's what I was going to get to. I was going to say that Because Zephyr... I would much rather have four copies of a five-mana spell than only one ten-mana spell. I was about to say, I think Zephyr um, is great, but I think it... Just has something different. Well, I'll, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and lump in every other red blue spells commander we've had before it. Oh, that's I, fine. I mean, I'm talking. I'm talking now. 
Niv Mizzet's a bad one because Niv Mizzet isn't really a spells commander. It's a, a it's a draw commander, so it's a little different. But I'm talking your old experience counters, you know, a uh, guy from back in the day, even like Vadric from Midnight Hunt, which plays the same ability. It just does it a little bit different. I just think Veyron has way too many payoffs mm -hmm. for the things you're already trying to do. Yeah. Uh, the fact that when you copy something, you get payoffs off of it. I mean, that's that's where it's really heavy. This plus a couple, uh, me. a couple creatures on the battlefield who care when you cast or copy spells are going to win you the game eventually. Right. Um, For I, sure. I, and if not, it's going to be with Faerun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, give it a. You know, you're playing those. Uh, you're playing those cards like Slip Through Space, where you give it unblockable turn to turn and draw a card, and just. And smack I, the damage. I think there's so many payoffs that don't just rely on Varen, but they also rel can be just crescendoed by the amount of other things you can play. And I thought about playing uh, more into like the old prowess strategy and whatnot. Uh, now I did put in one of my favorite red red creatures, Monastery Swiss Spear. I just think it's it's free. Uh, a one a one two with haste and prowess. Uh, it's free real one. estate, baby. Free real estate, baby. Uh, and I think it's just fine. It's a nice little one drop, and it kind of just pushes the uh, the game to the direction you're wanting to go with. Um, I I like things like Young Pyromancer of just getting a one one. Now I'm getting more one ones because, yay. <laughs> um, but I also think of like uh, one card I was really really considering was uh, one from Fate Reforged. It is I can't remember the name of it. Uh, like. Spell Swift Fist? No, that doesn't sound right. Anyways, it basically says whenever you cast an on a creature spell, it get the this creature gets plus one, plus zero, oh, and can't be blocked this turn. Um, yay, thank you for allowing me to hit for a huge amount of damage. Uh, it's a blue creature. Um, so it, it something like that I think would just be really, really nice to have. Um, it, it actually may not be in Fate. I know it's in that set, but it may not be in Fate. Um, yeah. Cool. Anyways, um, sorry, listener. He he pulled up uh, the Fate Reforged stuff. Um, you are pulling up uh, Nasiri and your so so. Um, what I think the most interesting, some of the most interesting cards to me in Strixhaven are our Deans, the the cards that are f flipped one on each side. Yeah. Um, so for my strategy, we have um, Valentin or Valentine and uh, Lissette. Those are the those are our main <laughs> our, our main uh, our main dean. And you and you have one or two in your strategy. But I was just looking to see because I've I've honestly never looked at the Prismari deans before. I looked at them and I didn't know if they were going to fit into mine. I and if I was kind of unsure, I I kind of not necessarily tossed them aside, but I didn't consider it for sure. Um, I think what's really interesting is uh, for for my Prismari. Uh, are the two, or I guess really three, planeswalkers <laughs> that I uh, I chose to put in here? One uh, I think is just way too obvious of Raul, uh, Raul, 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 Eric, Raul, Mr. Storm Conduit. Uh, whenever you cast, uh, he's a excuse me, he's a four mana planeswalker for two colorless, one blue, one red. Whenever you cast an instant, or excuse me, cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, he deals one damage to target opponent or planeswalker, uh, which is great just constantly getting that value uh not just for him now you're still getting it for your commander as well um which is just a great little thing to have i also added in the twins uh, the one from strict or the ones from strict strict haven miss rowan and mr will uh both i think are decent with that first little payoff uh, i would probably play more of the rowan rather than the will uh, because Rowan is cheaper, she's only two uh, colorless, one red, where Will is four colorless, one blue. Um, but uh, both of them, instant and sorcery spells I cast are one less to cast. Uh, but I do like uh, Rowan's, uh, I guess, mini ult. It's a minus four, so I guess it's an ult. <laughs> uh, you get an emblem whenever you cast uh, an instant or sorcery spell. You may pay two if you do copy that spell, and then you may choose new targets for that copy. Uh, Paying two colorless mana doesn't seem terrible to um, throw the same spell at somebody, especially if it's uh, a little bit bigger of a spell. Uh, maybe if I'm throwing out like a, um, mm, like I'm thinking something kind of crazy, like a, Chand a Chandra's Ignition. So that's a five minute spell, but if I pay two, now I have a huge amount of damage going at each opponent uh, twice, <laughs> which is great. 
So, um, you know, something something like that. Something like, uh, that's not a bad one either. Actually. So I want to get your opinion on a card because I, I go back and forth on this card because I think it's, oh man, it's, it's great if you can get it for as cheap as possible, but I think paying full price for it, it's kind of crazy. It's Magma Opus. This is a card that got played a lot in Standard at the time it came out. Um, it's a, it's a, it's used a lot more in, uh, in like a, in like a Hinata list where you can target and cheapen the copy of it. But Magma Opus is six, a blue and a red. It says it deals four damage dividers. You choose among any number of targets. Tap two target permanents. Create a four four token and draw two cards. And then for two hybrid blue or red and discarding it, you can create a treasure. I just wonder what you thought of Magma Opus and Commander. I, I Like I said, I go back and forth on it. I think it's too expensive, but I also don't hate the two mana to make a treasure. That was exactly what I was about to ask you. You think it's too expensive. Uh, I think the, I mean, with the cards that we're seeing now on the treasure side of things, I think it's going to be obsolete very quickly on that, the discarding for two mana when we're about to get a, what is it, an artifact or an enchantment that literally taps lands, get treasure? Yeah. Gross. I think Magma Opus, if I can cast it for free off of a Mystic Mastery, oh, yeah. I'll take it all day, every day. For sure. And that's the thing I think I like about it is you pitch it for two mana, get the treasure. Mm. And then if you have any way to flash it back or, you know, you use your Mystic Mastery to overload it and just cast it. So the way Mystic Mastery works for the listener who doesn't know, um, for, I think it's what, three and a red, you can play a instant or sorcery in your graveyard for free without paying its mana cost. You cast it for free without paying its mana cost. But for, what is it, eight mana, yeah, I believe? Yeah, so five colorless, three, uh, it is, excuse me, it is three colorless, one red for just one instant or sorcery. You can overload it for five colorless, three red. And, and so basically what you do is you, you would exile every instant and sorcery from your graveyard and you can cast copies without paying their mana costs. Mm -hmm. And so Mystic's Mastery is, is, is very much a finisher in this style of list because you're going to spend your turns playing all your spells and then just overload them all back. Uh, Magma Opus looks great when you overload it back, uh, but I think I like it for that discard. <laughs> I like it as a easy early game payoff. It probably looks bad in your opening hand because you're like, hey, man, what the heck am I gonna do with this? But I think to get it for free off of a Mizzix Mastery feels really good. You're dealing damage, you're drawing cards, you're getting a token, you're tapping stuff down. I feel like it's perfect off of a free cast. Or if you hard cast this for eight mana, you can get three or four copies of it. I feel like it feels good too. Yeah, I don't know if the the I don't know if I don't know that it's worth the mythic status and the eight mana status. Right. I was about to say, I don't know if it's worth if you love that card and you think it has done so much for you, then yeah, go for it. I, I don't know personally that I would play it because I feel like it is too much to do so little. Yes, you're getting the token. Yes, you're getting the cards. Yes, you're doing four damage. But yeah, you kind of look at it, you're only doing four damage. Now, let's go Magical Christmas Land. You have your board set up. You have like a gutter snipe. You have... Um, some kind of you have Vayron out, you have um, you have Raul. Let's oh, say you have oh, Raul. Be Belladros is my mythic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. uh, okay, I was I was trying to figure out what the Witherbloom mythic was. It, it, it's Belladros. It's just Belladros. Belladros is the mythic because <laughs> Galazeth is mythic as well. But oh, it's 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 Harness Infinity. That's oh, what yeah. it is. Harness Infinity, uh, great card. Great payoff if you're playing the uh, graveyard strategy. Yeah. But, uh, but anyways, uh, beside the point, let's say you got Mag Magic Creature Slam, you uh, you have a Gutter Snipe, you have like Rao, uh Storm Conduit out and whatnot. And you play this, you know, you hard cast it, you have the mana for it, the game's been going on for a while. I guess maybe, but I don't see it being a finisher is my problem. For eight mana, I'm looking for a finisher. Like, that's why I'm like Mystic Mastery finisher. This, it does a lot, but it doesn't finish the game for mana that I wish would finish the game. I think I think I would say I like it for the ability that you can bury it. You know, remember yeah. that remember that in red and blue you have so many ways to unearth it. Uh not only that, but you have so many ways to you know, there's so many draw spells that have you draw and then discard. And if you know Mizzix's mastery is your payoff, you you don't mind pitching a few extra spells that you can get back later or you know, you, you might have a way to flash them back, or you might have an Underworld Breach. You might have different ways to bring them back. I just think you don't mind pitching a few spells if you know you can cast them later. I mean, I can think of four tutors for an instant or sorcery spell off the top of my head that are all three mana or less. So finding the Mystic's Mastery isn't tough. No. It's, it, it's just 
to me, I think if you're playing the combo version of Varen, that's what you're setting up for. Mm. You're setting up all your gutter snipes, all your fields, all your things that are going to get you ready to go. Then you play that big, big Mizzix mastery on your turn, and you're going to kill everybody that turn, either by combat or by all of the triggers that are going to go off. Right. That's how I've seen Varen played, is you set it up for that big Mizzix mastery turn, but you're going to chip at everybody along the way. I was about to say, I would, that's what I was thinking. As I was chipping everybody along the way, my graveyard's getting full, getting full, getting full, and then finally I have Mizzix mastery for the win. Or I play a Niv Mizzet and draw. Oh, or you know, you you play the right. Uh, you play. You know, we have Invoke Calamity now. It does something similar, but only gets two target cards. Yeah. You know, there's or you have stuff like uh, uh, you have stuff like Underworld Breach, right, which allows you to go cast spells from your graveyard. You know, there's so many ways to, to flash back your spells. Mm-hmm. I think I think for me, it, like Veyron seems like it's the best when you're setting up so that no matter what you play, you're pinging for damage. Yeah, I agree. For sure. Uh, I think we saw Veyron get played really. I, 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 I don't like to use this as examples a lot of the times because I know that uh, it can be very hit and miss, but we saw uh, Josh Lee Kwai play oh, yeah. Veyron on game nights uh, for, for Strixhaven, and he did a very good job at, yeah. I think, displaying what Veyron is good at. I will say, like, I think that's where the joke of, like, you know, Josh is drawing for cards came from, but I think that's what you you saw this commander can really really shine in it's just like going to get you what you really want at the right time and doing it in such a cool way that your commander's getting bigger everything's triggering multiple times um things are bouncing all over the place and damage is being slung without you really doing much you're casting like two spells and this is what's happening whereas most of the time you cast two spells like okay cool you did that so i think fun fun Question here before we start. Uh, I have a fun discussion idea first. After I was this, say, before we start fighting each other, like physically. physically. <laughs> if you had to pick one of the other three to play, now we, we did not prepare lists for these. We have not done any research. Oh, give me Andy Villamacus. And Villamacus Lorehole would be yeah, your choice. Yeah, give me Lorehole. I want to talk you, for you, days. You you want the Narset that we have at home? Because <laughs> yeah. it is. It's it's Narset of the Light Way, but 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 in red white. Yeah, exactly. As to, 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 uh, to, uh, one, I already love Boros, and two, like, give me that. Let's go. <laughs> um, it don't give me that crappy uh, Shadrix and uh, wait, am I? I would just I would just break Adrix and Nev like everyone else has. Yeah. I, 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 the reason I don't like it is because it's just I don't think it's. Simic, the, the the Simic style having more mana than you know what to do with would make any strategy good. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's the the funny joke I think is if you have infinite mana, then you can win the game. Like mana machine go burr, but like <laughs> yeah. I, for me, the honest choice would be Shadrix. I, I've seen plenty of games, plenty of Shadrix lists where people make tokens and kind of push the value. Yeah, you don't play as much of the aristocrats. You kind of play the uh, you kind of play the flood. You play like the flying token flood of of that uh jimmy of course just recently played this on an episode of extra turns on the command zone and he played a fairly good list what would probably be close to what i would end up making but um if i had to go if i had to go lore hold it would actually be one of the two commanders that we got from the the, the decks I, I think both Ozgear and um alibu are both really interesting commanders i would probably go the Ozgear route uh or is it Osgear? Am I saying that right? It's Osgear and then Alibu. Okay, yeah, I would probably go the Osgear route if I had to. I I think he's just. I really like Alibu. The the ability to attack with an when one more artifact creatures control attack, it deals X damage to target any target where X is and Scry X where X is the number of attack tapped artifacts you control uh, this is where you are very very so you aggressive. just <laughs> so you just dump artifacts in you're tapping them for mana and then you know my first thought is you know just 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 i think she she's an all-star in osgear and i think osgear is not a bad all-star and nally boo just i think they go so hand in hand with what they're trying to do i mean but i love the artifact focused red white it's not combat focused it's really artifact focused and you have so many cool ways now of course uh is Ali Boo going after your Blight still fun? Of course it is. But that's not the point. The point is uh, that... Oh, wait a minute. What? <laughs> um, uh, one of our friends in our playgroup has built a Guillaume Master Chef. It's a, it's a food deck. And that, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I, literal uh, chef's kiss. I think it's so much fun. I think but, it has a lot of potential. 
um, especially when, please, please tell me I'm saying this right. I think, um, oh my gosh, it's one of my favorite sets I didn't get to play in. Uh, Fairy Tale Land. Oh, Eldraine. I think Eldraine came after it, right? Eldraine came before Strixhaven. Oh, well, that's dumb. Uh, but anyways, well, you have things in Eldraine that also have great uh, food payoffs. Uh, there's the troll that likes to, you know, eat the food more or less and get bigger and do things. Yeah. Uh, which, it, it's great payoff. I think Gion has a good uh, little, like strategy that can push forward uh it's it's just fun i don't think it's very strong i do think it's just fun uh pure fun uh i i, I do kind of like the alley boo going blank still fun now that you say that that's hilarious uh, i've seen too many brinas that make me want to barf i think that strategy is just dumb uh it makes i know okay i know i'm being really rude here but <laughs> like i i think it makes uh politics uh, sound terrible. <laughs> it, it makes it, it makes me want to gouge my eyes out sometimes when I see it uh, because it doesn't make me want to attack my opponent or the healthier opponent. It just it's like that doesn't help anybody except the person playing Brina, and I know this every single time. Um, so I just end up attacking the Brina player anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think the reason that I never really truly looked into uh, Quandrix is because Adrix and Nev. It's just too easy to break. Yeah. It's too easy to really make work. And it's not what I want from my Simic Commander. You know, since the sets come out, I've found what I join in the Simic Commander. And, of course, I've pursued that. And I've, I've made multiple Simic lists. I made a Volo list as well. And to break that. Not the, um, not the Volo. A Volo. Volo was a, was a... It was a heck of a time. I love that one. It was a That's hell cool. of a week. No, I was a. It was a. It was a fun time. I, I. I like Volo a ton. My problem with Volo is I just felt like it. I remember the car ride from your apartment to go get um, the our our pre-release sets or whatever for our little home tournament we were making or we were doing, and you like went off into this whirlwind of a beautifulness that was just like why Volo is the stuff and i was just like i was listening so intently because i was like my first time getting back into it and i was just like this guy's making me excited i don't really know what's happening right now but okay who the hell is volo again <laughs> volo is the truth no um <laughs> no i love volo and volo for president volo it, i like to i always like to believe that there's a hall of fame of the commanders that i like i've taken apart I'm like volo is in the hall of fame oh uh, for of sure commanders he taken so apart. Much fun. but anyways uh simic i think can be broken way too easily the fact that there's not more simic commanders up in the top lists of like edh rack and stuff like that is a little appall uh, not appalling but yeah appalling um but i don't know i I, I think we can definitely say that the the Preckins that came, sorry, the the, the Preckins, the Preckins. That's what we start calling precons. Uh, TM Michael Thomas, <laughs> TMNT twenty twenty two. Uh, anyways, um, the precons of Strixhaven, all of them were just gorgeously done. Well, they're very very strong. I think you can still pick up any of them and do pretty decently right out of the box. We've seen even Zafai do dumb stuff right out of the box. Um, and I think it's I think it's hilarious. Uh, I remember our buddy Brian. He got it, and then he added a couple more spells to it, and it hurt even more. And I was just like, "Man, how? Why? Yeah, why is this happening? Like, <laughs> I know how to play spell singers, and that is not how you do it. You are a madman." Um, and it's just hilarious what 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 all of these precons can do. And I I don't know. I like them. I, I really do. So our main, our main uh, drive to, to talk about Strixhaven here is because Strixhaven was our Commander 2021 set. Of it was your Commander 2021. Well, well, no, it around. is. I wasn't around. It was the Commander 2021 I wasn't set. around. It wasn't ours. It was the. Oh, okay. It was the only. <laughs> you own it. <laughs> no, no. It was, it was literally Commander 2021 came out with Strixhaven. I know. I was just saying that you own it. So um, we, we wanted to do this because, you know, we're about to see Commander 2022 come out with Capenna. Ew. And uh, we may or may not be very, very excited for it. Uh, yeah, we're not going to tip our hand on that. And <laughs> and uh, we wanted to go back and talk about... I, I feel like ever since this set's come out, ever since you started playing again, these are just... These are two color archetypes we keep finding our way back into. One mm -hmm. of us will make something and we'll talk about it and then we'll go, man, remember this card? And then we just... It's just... It's, just, it's cool to see... 
two color pairs that aren't Ravnica get so much love. Yeah, for sure. That's saying a lot, considering Ravnica is probably the most popular plane of all time. Uh, it's uh, definitely the most popular two color plane of all time. A lot of people, a lot of people have so much love for Ravnica, and I, and I like Ravnica. Don't get me wrong, Ravnica is um, unlike anything else in Magic. But um, I, I will say, since we've seen like the gates or whatever the gate lands from that weird leak for who cares we're only like 17 people listen to us right now i'm happy to say this <laughs> in front of all of them but since we've seen the gates in that weird leak for commander legends 2 i mean like that made me literally go back and be like all right i'm ready to put my gates list together and i mean it's not gonna do well but who's yeah. the who's the pony that you're betting on for like for gates like my commander or yeah, that's the joke. Who, who, who are you? Who are you, who oh, are you putting your money on? I mean, well, my commander that I'm using right now is you, you won't ever guess it. Like you really won't, and I'm happy because it's not Kenrith. Because no, I will not do that to myself. It is a white commander, but it also has five colors in it, so that's great. Because there are no like five color go get land. It's either Sisse or Kyodai. It is Kyodai. Oh, okay. I was gonna say there's only two that I can think of yeah, that are white that have five color on them. Yeah, it's Kyodai. But, I went Kyodai because I just wanted a, a, a newer commander that's five color, and I wanted to do something different. Uh, and I think it's kind of cool that when it comes in, gives something indestructible kind of thing. Oh, Maggie, this is our last head-to-head -head episode uh, before Capenna releases. Mm -hmm. uh, we have yet to decide our schedule for head-to-head -head for Capenna, but guys, it is coming. We are really excited about it, and uh, there's going to be some cool content coming up. Uh, Mikey and I are going to put our Varen and Belladros lists into the comments so you guys can go take a look at them. Um, I don't know about you, but the Belladros de deck is something I'm testing. So mm -hmm. if you listen to this in the future, it's possible that my list has changed since this episode came out. But it's probably just going to be more gross than it is now because of the support we keep getting. I I've talked in the past that I wanted to take apart Torbran, redo it and everything. Uh, I, I put Torbrand in this deck because I, this is this is the deck that I wanted Torbrand to really be. Was a spell slingy, do damage, and kind of get payoff with and stuff like that. Um, I think this is where Torbrand will find its home, but I will still have my Torbrand list as well. He will build well. his uh, quaint yet elegant shack and live the rest of his days out, uh, augmenting uh, your damage spells. Yes, doing that, and then also having his own deck to command <laughs> yeah. as well. Uh, that'll be uh, different as well. But yeah, no, I uh, I, I probably will uh, finally, when I get around to it, I, I need to finish a, lot of, a few other decks first. I don't want to... I've figured out that I, I, I have this, and it's there, and it's ready to go, and I have an idea for it. But red-blue Spellslinger will always be a thing. So I'm not going to, you know... And be like, oh no, I'm going to miss out on something. Yeah. No. So the day this episode comes out will be the start of uh, Capenna pre-release. Oh, you guys, yeah. If you guys have shops around you, please go out to pre-release. Pre-release is a good time. Um, I'm working on a little pre-release video for Friday that hopefully I can get up and oh, and, cool. and, and will be fun. Not Probably not before pre-release has happened. It'll probably be uh, probably sometime on Saturday, so I'll probably miss most of the pre-release window. But How dare you? Uh, pre-releases are a ton of fun. Mikey and I have always tried to go to one or experience one with uh, the guys we, we play with um, and have a good time. Pre-release is a really cool way to go out and experience another format than Commander. Commander's great and we all love Commander, but I have always enjoyed Limited. I think it's a way to play more fun standard. <laughs> and it's, I was about to say, I would rather play a um, It's a less sealed. guns blazy. Yeah. yeah. Limited and sealed are less guns blazy. They're more incremental value. They're more slower games more methodical kind of like commander it can be at times and I, and I think it's just more fun to play i feel like we should play more sealed just random sealed like go find like how many packs do we get in a sealed? uh six. six yeah just go find like six packs of something that we like and just go nuts yeah i mean i've always enjoyed sealed I, now i enjoyed a draft because drafting can be interesting but yeah. drafting is kind of tough in real life because you need a lot of people but yes uh, that's the i guess the privilege we have that magic has an online client that we can you go remember, through you remember when we did uh, Crimson Vow. It was just you and I. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Eight. It was. Yeah, that one kind of got derailed, so we did it on our own. But um, guys, I mean, it's still like I just like to open in the box. And I'm sorry, I know that you were trying to end, but I, I just like Capenna's coming. Capenna Legends Two is coming. Oh, it is. Uh, we are aware of the leaks that happened. We have access to the photos, and we're going to hold them a ransom now. Um, I, from the leaks we've already seen, am overjoyed at really? Command Legends 2 already. 
I think that there's things I would not have expected. Uh, we got to see something that I can't explain yet, which makes me really excited to see what that means. And um, there's always something that confuses everybody. It's okay. <laughs> and as is normal for Millsy and Magic, there's a new dragon that I want to date for six to eight months. So what's the and worst that can that happen? And with that note, uh, we're going to skedaddle. <laughs> we will catch you guys next time.